What is up guys, today is Thursday, which means it is update Thursday on Old School RuneScape, and today we have a bunch of Fossil Island improvements for you guys that we are going to go over. Now, if you guys did not see my video that I uploaded yesterday, because apparently it did not hit some sub boxes, I will leave it as a link, the first link in the description of this video will be a link to that video. So if you guys want to watch it after this one, that would be awesome. So this update is pretty much solely an update to Fossil Island, that's pretty much all of it. There are some quality of life things for other things, but Fossil Island has been, I don't want to say immensely improved, but they have had some quality of life updates to it that have maybe made it a bit more useful to players, since it's not that useful at the moment for certain things. They have buffed a couple things, so I guess you guys can see for yourself if you like the changes or not. So up here you see that at the end of November we offered an array of changes to content on Fossil Island in the form of a poll. Now that Dragon Slayer 2 has been released and our Christmas celebrations are complete, we're able to deliver the changes in today's game update. Changes to birdhouses, changes to the wyverns other thing, changes to the mycelium pool balancing, changes to fishing, agility, and thieving, lots of changes that may actually make you want to go to the island itself. So the first thing we have is a mini task list which has been added to the archaeologist camp which is documenting your exploration of Fossil Island. So it says your completion of these tasks are going to reward you with additional fossils to start your display case. Some of the actions on the mini task list were already being tracked in the game and you'll find that these have been ticked off for you already. And these will get you a start towards claiming more of Peter's extra fossils. The task list can be accessed via the notice board located immediately next to the general store. Next up, we have changes to the birdhouses. Now, I can honestly say that I have actually never used a birdhouse either on my main or my hardcore, and I'm assuming that many of you guys haven't either, and maybe even never even heard of the birdhouses, but they have been changed. They may be a bit more useful for right now. If you guys don't know what they are, pretty much you can set them up on Fossil Island. If you come back after like an hour or so, there will be some birds in there that you can collect, and then you actually may have a chance of getting from some bird nests, obviously, and then some seeds from those bird nests as well. And they're dead meat. Well, meat, but they're dead body meat. You know what I mean. Bird meat. You actually now get your clockwork back when you dismantle the birdhouse after checking it for seeds or you just want to take it down. Originally, you didn't get that clockwork back, and now you do. If you guys didn't know, you need a clockwork to actually build the birdhouse itself, and the clockwork goes for about 1 to 2k on the Grand Exchange, so it may be a bit expensive to build the birdhouse. So the fact you get it back now means it's pretty much getting all your money back. Only thing it says here is that you will not be able to dismantle the birdhouse if you don't have space for your clockwork. So of course, make sure you have space in your inventory. All tiers of the birdhouses can now hold up to 10 birds with higher tier birdhouses yielding increased chance of nests and seeds. Higher tiers of birdhouse have been introduced for maple, mahogany, yew, magic, and redwood logs. So the best one you can build is a redwood birdhouse, which requires 90 crafting and 89 hunter, though it does not give you much crafting XP at all. Magic birdhouse is 75 crafting and 74 hunter, which is actually quite the decrease, I have to say. And then the lowest one down here is the maple birdhouse, which requires 45 crafting and 44 hunter. All you have to do is feed and catch the birds by placing these in the right spots. If you guys want more explanation on birdhouses, I will leave a link to the wiki page below if you guys want to read up on them a little bit more. I may actually test these out in a future video just because they seem sort of interesting. I wonder if they'd be worth it on a hardcore or on an Iron Man. And now we have an update to the underwater agility and thieving training. So if you guys didn't know, there's an underwater area on Fossil Island where you have to talk to a mermaid and she will tell you to search different chests in the underwater area. And if you search those chests, you get some certain rewards from that. You get Numulite, you get mermaid tears, and now you actually get glistening mermaid tears as well. And when you use these on her, on her training option, she actually will give you XP for doing this mini game and this activity, whatever you, whatever you want to call it. So right here we have agility and thieving activity no longer rewards players directly with both agility and thieving XP. The activity will now yield glistening mermaid tier. So instead of getting the big XP drop per chest, you actually will get these mermaid tiers instead of these glistening mermaid tiers, which you can then trade into her for XP. They can be traded with Marin for XP, as I just said, of the player's choice, agility, thieving, or a combination of the two. So it's sort of like the menu you see at the Brimhaven Agility Arena where you can choose your reward. This is sort of what it looks like there at the moment. You may not cash in more than 700 tiers at a time. Attempting to exchange more than 700 tiers will result in the surplus tiers being discarded, which... Wow, that's free XP just being discarded, which so, uh, yeah, make sure you don't try to exchange more than 700. Mayrin will warn you of this once you obtain a glistening mermaid tier and you already have 695 or more. So this seems a bit more worth it now. I'm not really sure if this changes XP rates or not, but the fact that you can actually cash them all in now once you have these glistening mermaid tiers seems pretty cool. I'm sure people will test this out. I'm sure people will let you know if it's being more efficient or not. For those of you who are into drift net fishing, CETO will now allow players permanent access to an instant drift net area for a one-off fee of 20,000 Nelmulites. That was 
a mouthful. A new mermaid has been added to the Driftnet Cave. She can now hold onto your spare drift nets to help you save some space, and she will accept noted and unnoted drift nets and can store up to 2,000 nets. The nets are return only in unnoted form. The collection screen for fish caught in your drift net now displays an option to bank your whole catch for a cost of five Numulite, which really isn't that much, and puffer fish are not bankable. No Numulite will be taken if banking isn't successful, should you not have any fish if you're able to bank. Everybody's favorite type of wyverns, the Fossil Island wyverns, are finally getting a change. I'm just kidding. Everybody prefers the one on Munskipper Point anyway in that dungeon. The Fossil Island and Ancient Wyverns have had their defense levels lowered, so the Fossil Wyverns defense are now decreasing from 120, which matches the Skeletal Wyverns to 90, so they're going to be easier to kill, and the Ancient Wyverns defense levels are decreasing from from 220 to 150. Now this one's really interesting right here. The players can now purchase a task block option via the Slayer Rewards menu, which will stop Slayer Masters from assigning Fossil Island Wyvern tasks. Now I believe this means that on top of those those tasks you can already have as blocked, you have the, I think five slots max if you completed all the diaries. You actually can have six technically now if you spend the 500 points to block these wyverns. The option costs 500 slayer points as I said and can be toggled via the slayer reward menu to disable and re-enable the assignment. You won't need to pay it again. The reason for the seemingly high cost is that it's a one-off purchase for a block which has a toggle option and it doesn't take up one of your existing block spaces. So pretty interesting. It's already been very well known that the wyverns themselves have been pretty useless. I mean they drop some nice things. They have you know, the bones themselves, they have decent drops, but everybody usually prefers to go to the regular wyverns, and even those aren't as popular anymore. There's a lot of new things in the game that are better money than they are nowadays that drop better supplies than both of these sets of wyverns do. They were pretty hype when they first came out, and I think the only reason people even camp there or even go there anymore is to try to get the wyvern visage. So whether or not this changes if people, you know, consistently go there or not, I highly doubt it. I think people are more excited about the fact that you can now block these wyverns as opposed to the fact that their defense has not gone down quite quite a bit and they're probably easier to kill and you get more kills per inventory. But I'm sure we'll see in the upcoming future if people end up going there or not. I still doubt it. As I mentioned earlier, the supplies they drop aren't the greatest. There's better things to kill in the game. So I think people are more excited about this. I did see on actually Twitter that they released sort of a teaser to block, be able to block these wyverns and it was only 80 slayer points in the teaser. So the fact that they made it 500 now is pretty crazy. But I do understand the 500 slayer points. It is a big number, but the fact that it's a one, you know, it's a one-time fee and you can toggle this block, it makes sense. So something else that I've actually never ever tried on fossil and i'm sure some of you guys or most of you guys have never tried it as well is this mycelium or mycelium pool balancing if you guys didn't know what it is pretty much you can use your fossils on it it will turn your fossils into enriched bones which you can use on a strange machine on the house on the hill for prayer xp which has now been increased times five which actually is quite a bit if you think about it so all your extra fossils that you don't use in the museum you can take to this pool you can then turn them into these enriched bones and then use them for a lot of prayer xp now it's actually completed at a one-to-one -one ratio which you can see on video right now or on screen right now previously there was a one to three chance of calcium and phosphate being deductive a one to nine chance that both will go down and a two to nine chance that just calcium or just phosphate will go down and a 4 to 9 chance that neither will go down. Now, those numbers probably don't mean anything to you. They really shouldn't. The fact that it's now a 1 to 1 ratio means it's quite easy to understand. I understood it in less than like a minute of doing it. It was a little bit weird, but I actually get it now. I don't really come to Fossil Island on both my accounts, but I do understand that if you have many fossils on your account and you want to sort of turn them into maybe something else, in this case, you can turn them into enriched bones and get quite a bit of prayer XP. If you have the bear, the big ones, the rare ones, they're 2,500 XP per bone, which does add up if you have a lot of them in your bank. And that was pretty much it for the big fossil island changes. We have a couple smaller ones here, you know, the ones that aren't big enough to, you know, deem their own little area up here. We have uh, implings can now spawn on Fossil Island. Woohoo! The shop in the volcanic mine now sells volcanic ash at a cost of 40 points per item. The monsters, or the tar monsters, now inflict less damage with their standard and area of effect attacks. The hoop stakes now twice as many spawns, now have twice as many spawns and respawn at a faster rate. That is a big one right there. The deranged archaeologist has been moved to a location found south of the Sulusip mushroom woodcutting area. And the players chopping those mushrooms will find they are no longer inconveniently forced to the southwestern side of the area. Using super glass make now awards you with a correct amount of crafting XP when giant seaweed is used. And finally, we have the in other news as well. If you guys want to read through them yourself, the only big one here that I really see is that ladder icons have been added to the staircase in the myth skill. Thank goodness. I cannot find those ladders the first time I was in there. It took me 
absolutely forever. But again, guys, thank you for watching this video. I do appreciate you guys all tuning in. If you guys made it this far, make sure to drop a like and a comment on the video. And once again, thank you for watching. Hope to see you next time. Have a good one and peace. Wow.